I'm also concerned about people on this committee and their own anti-police rhetoric. This is a defund the FBI campaign effort. That was quite entertaining from someone that had a sexual relationship with a Chinese spy, and everyone knows it. But I move to take our words down. Completely inappropriate. Yeah, stand by just a second while we research the rule. Um, give me just a second. The chair uh, recognizes the gentlelady from Georgia and asks if she would like to retract those words. No, I will not. Complete outrage where China is poisoning America's children, poisoning our teenagers, poisoning our young people. How long are you going to let this go on? Congresswoman, let me assure you that we're not letting it go on. We are fighting this. Scourge. No, I reclaim my time. You're a liar. You are letting this go on in the numbers. Well, no, obviously. actually, I want you to take the words of the speaker down. So in uh, making a ruling on this, uh, it's pretty clear that the rules state you can't impugn someone's uh, character. Uh, identifying or calling someone a liar is unacceptable in this committee. And I make the ruling that we strike those words. It's, sorry, just a point of order, it's a legitimate question. You're recognized. Or, or, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did you move to take the words down or to strike them, Mr. Thompson? Yeah, sorry, I just stepped in. Point yeah, of order. take them down. So that's what we do. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. My understanding is if words are taken down, that means that the the member can no longer speak in whatever the proceeding is that those words were said. Personal inquiry, point of personal inquiry. That's, there's no, no such Stand thing. Stand by just a second. House, uh, when we strike, uh, it does terminate the time of the individual who is speaking. So uh, the gentlelady is no longer recognized. Uh, the chair now recognizes Mr. Ivey, I believe. Uh, can I make a point of inquiry, Mr. Chairman? You can. So the, the ruling was that because she used the word liar, um, that was taken down, which I agree with. Yes. But, but accusing... A this, statement of fact is very similar to the posters that uh, Mr. There's uh, no statement of fact. There's no statement of fact. There's no, there's there's no, no factual fact. basis for the statement. We're not here to debate this, okay? And the ruling was made by the chair that these... Previous words were not against the rules of Clause 1 and Clause 4 of Rule 17. But to tell someone that they are a liar is, it, it's pretty clear in the rules. Slander is clearly covered by the rules. Tell you what, I hope it's okay that Marjorie Taylor Greene only has a few seconds of fodder for Hannity's show tonight. I know it's not the usual five full minutes that he was relying on, but hopefully those small sound bites will be enough to please the right-wing media ecosystem that she's performing for. Now, just imagine for a moment if Marjorie Taylor Greene and these other MAGA extremists were actually smart enough to know the rules of the body that they're currently serving in. There is a reason that Trump's crimes were called stupid Watergate, and Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing her part to make sure that moniker still sticks. Now, let's think for a moment about why why Republicans like Green are so hellbent on focusing on fentanyl. And it's pretty obvious. They've used fentanyl as a proxy to surface their favorite issue, the border. And they've been doing this for years. There were at least another 100,000 people who got away into this country. Those are the ones that are bringing the drugs over, that are smuggling people over, that are bringing terrorists in, that have a criminal record. We don't know what those criminal records are. They may be murder. What President Biden has done with his border, opening up, now we're catching people on the terrorist watch list. Fentanyl has increased by 300 percent, killing Americans as we come across. Under the Biden administration, we have had the most uh, gotaways at our southern border in the history of ever. And under the Biden administration, we've had the most fentanyl coming into our country in the history, history of ever. But even according to the Cato Institute, which is one of the country's leading right-wing think tanks, the ones smuggling fentanyl into the U.S. aren't asylum seekers. They're not immigrants. They are Americans. In fact, the market for fentanyl is composed of 99% U.S. citizens. And in 2021, nearly 9 in 10 people convicted of trafficking fentanyl were U.S. citizens. Here's a chart of fentanyl traffickers from 2018 to 2021, proving that it is U.S. citizens who are responsible for moving these drugs. And remember the Trump administration's decision to shut down the border and remember how the entire right cheered it on? 
Turns out that when the border was closed, that exacerbated the transition to American fentanyl abuse because fentanyl is the easiest to conceal drug. Seizures tripled from 30% of combined heroin and fentanyl seizures to over 90%, while annual deaths doubled from 2019 to 2021. Here's a statement from the Cato Institute, which again, is a leading right-wing think tank. It is monstrous that tens of thousands of people are dying unnecessarily every year from fentanyl. Reducing deaths require figuring out the cause, not jumping to blame a group that is not responsible. Instead Instead of attacking immigrants, policymakers should focus on effective solutions that help people at risk of a fentanyl overdose. But do any of those facts matter to Republicans? Not at all. Because their goal isn't to actually solve any of these problems, it's to have a talking point to constantly batter Democrats with. If they did want to solve it, they'd have passed immigration reform when they had full control of government from 2017 to 2019. But instead, they just gave themselves a tax cut and left the issue of immigration untouched because they know that it's more useful to them as a problem than it is being solved. They're not in the business of fixing things, they're in the business of keeping problems top of mind and exploiting your never-ending rage about it. Consider too, if Republicans, like Green, were serious about protecting Americans, you would think they wouldn't be so quick to cast aside the number one cause of death for young people, and that is gun deaths. And yet, not a word about tackling gun violence. Still, they'll claim that in order to reduce gun violence, we need more guns. Now, of course, we all know that's bullshit. We have the benefit of being able to challenge that strategy by comparing our laws to the laws in every other country in the planet, where guns are less readily available and there are few, if any, mass shootings. It's almost like there's a correlation between the number of guns and the number of mass shootings. Who would have guessed? But again, this has nothing to do with protecting people and everything to do with these politicians protecting themselves and their donors. They'll pretend to be offended about fentanyl despite not only having passed zero comprehensive immigration reform when they had the majority, but actually exacerbating the problem by shutting down the border which immediately led to a surge in fentanyl smugglings. And yet, at the same time, when there is a problem that's actually more deadly when it comes to America's young people, you get responses like this one. Three precious little kids lost their lives, and I believe three adults, I believe is. And, um, and the shooter, of course, lost their life too. So it's, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And we're not gonna fix it. Criminals are gonna be criminals. And my daddy fought in the Second World War, fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese, and he told me, he said, buddy, he said, if somebody wants to take you out and doesn't mind losing their life, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. Pretty amazing to see a legislator, whose job it is to legislate, decide that nothing can be done to solve a problem that could quite literally be solved with legislation. It's almost like these people aren't acting in good faith. And that was a point that Jamie Raskin very clearly seized upon in a recent interview. You know, he speaks the party line there, which is when gun violence happens, their, um, their go-to motto is, oh, this was evil, this is moral evil, there's evil in the world. Suddenly, they're all like cloistered theologians just pronouncing upon evil in the world, as opposed to elected officials who are sent to Congress in order to get something done, but they just throw up their hands and say, well, oh yes, the, you know, three more school children were assassinated in school. There's evil in the world, c'est la vie. What more can be done? I mean, it's obscene. And future generations will look back on this as a period where an entire political party basically adopted an implicit policy of mass sacrifice because they're basically saying we're going to sacrifice all of these innocent people who are being mowed down in massacres and just the daily toll of gun violence to our vision of the Second Amendment, which is a completely twisted and distorted view of the Second Amendment. So look, I wanna be clear, none of this is to say that the issue of fentanyl isn't important because it absolutely is. But Republicans are not here to offer legitimate solutions. They are here to exploit this tragedy for their own political benefit. Again, the past few actions that they have taken actually exacerbated the problem, and that's coming from a right-wing think tank, not me. If the GOP has shown us anything, it's that they are not capable of solving problems, but they'll be happy to wail about them if they think it'll help them at the ballot box. Remember, Republicans came into this cycle pretending they would do something to tackle inflation and gas prices. Remember that? If you can name one single action they've taken to do that, I'd love to hear it because you and I both know that the answer is nothing. The fact is that they've already shown us who they are and what they're willing to do. They'll sit in their hearings and execute gotcha moments for their five minute cable hit on Fox, but that's all. They're not here to help you or me or anyone in this country. They're here to help themselves and their brands. And they've proven it time and time again. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. 
Before you go, I need your help. I'm right on the cusp of hitting 2 million subscribers, so please help me grow this channel so the progressive media ecosystem grows by hitting the subscribe button right here on the screen. I also started a Spanish channel so we can finally start regaining some of that lost ground among Spanish speakers, so if you want to help support those efforts, you can hit that subscribe button. And finally, if you listen to podcasts and you want to support mine, you'll find a link to that on the screen as well. Thanks so much for watching.